Okay, to begin, we're going to be going through this code and uh, we're going to be writing it in assembly. This is MIPS assembly. And this is the uh, C code that would be corresponding with this code below. So just to go over what this is, we are declaring five static variables. So what that means is that these are going to be created in memory before the program starts to run. Okay, So we're going to have these sort of separate from this. So what this does is we create these five variables. I just put random numbers and we just see if i is equal to j, then f is going to have the value of g plus h. And then otherwise, f is going to have the value g minus h. So we can see from the code we've created, i is 7, j is 4, that it's going to go to the else statement. So let's just look at what the MIPS assembly would be like in order to uh, replicate this code in MIPS. So first we have our data segment. So this is going to be the segment uh, of, of variables that are going to be static variables, which means they're in memory created before the code runs. So that's why we correlate this with this, right? These are the same things. So what we do is we just create five different tags for our names or, or, or identifiers, and then they're going to be type word. So word is going to give us four bytes in memory, and this is going to be the value for each one. So here we have our text, and our text is just going to be the code that's going to run. And so what we're doing to begin is we're using something called LW, which is load word. So we're going to be taking what's in F, which in this case is 0, and we're loading it into S0, which is a register name. So if it's not so apparent what these register names are, if we look to the right hand side, we see all of these different names right here. So these are all the different registers that we have access to. And they're pretty similar, except that we use different conventions for different ones. So all the registers that begin with S are called save temporary, and you could even highlight over them, you could see what that means. Uh, essentially, we just want them to be saved um, when we're passing them to functions or anything like that. Um, it doesn't really make a difference, but it just, I, I think that in this program we want them to be saved. We don't want them to, to change, even though we're not really using functions, but this just seems like a good, uh, good use for them. So here, what I'm doing is I'm just taking these values and putting them in the register. So 0 is going to go to this one, 3 is going to go to this one, 5 is going to go to this one, and so on. So once we've done that, um, we are going to use this thing called BNE, branch not equal. So if what's in this is not equal to what's in this, we're going to go to else, right? And that's kind of similar to here. If i is equal to j, we go in here. If i is not equal to j, we go to else. So it's a little bit different uh, syntax-wise, but it's the same logic. So you see we're going to be going to else if what's in S3, which in our case is 7, is not equal to S4, which in our case is 4. So it's going to jump to else. So it's going to jump to else. So the reason that we need to jump is because this is going to be executing sequentially. So if we don't jump to else, then it's just going to do what it was going to do um, in the if statement. And this if statement right here is add what's in S1 and S2 and put it in S0. So this, this line 34, is the same thing as this right here. Okay, so because this didn't work, we're going to jump to the else, right? So instead we're going to do the subtraction. We're going to do the subtraction and we're going to be taking what's in S1 and S2 and putting it in S0. So if you're not familiar with this language, you have these two operands, the second operand and the third operand go into the first operand, just, just like how it looks in C++, just like that. So instead, imagine that we did, these two were equal, S3 and S4 were equal, then we wouldn't go to else, we would do this add, we'd add them together, and then we would jump to exit, because if we didn't jump to exit, then we would do what's in else. So this J stands for jump, and we're going to skip over the else, and we're going to go all the way to exit.
So once we're in exit, what we're going to do is use something called SW. Just like we loaded Word from, from here to here, we're going to store what's in here and put it back in there. And it's actually easy to know what's the direction because sometimes it looks like we're actually going in the opposite direction than we were before. But this um, compiler, or whatever it is, uh, it gives you instructions. So I use SW. It gives me uh, all the different options I can use, and it says store contents of T1 into effective memory word address. So it'll actually tell me I'm taking what's here and putting it in here. So it's really useful. Okay, so now we're going, we got our, our code explained, so let's run it and see what's going on. So we're going to assemble. It says it's completed it uh, successfully. And then we're going to look and see what's going on in the text segment. So the text segment is essentially all the different lines of code that are going to be run. So I'm going to move this over a little bit. And this is a really cool uh, compiler or whatever because it gives us a lot of information. So um, this right here is the text segment. So each one of these is the line of code that's written. So here's the, here's the line. And then here's the comments. So it even keeps what our comments are. And then here's going to be all the registers. So um, we don't want to go too much into the basic part because that's actually what the, uh, this is actually what's going on. This is the line. So it essentially takes this and it breaks them down into two different instructions. So just to kind of go over it a little bit, uh, here are the addresses, and these are the addresses of each line of code. So because the, uh, the code is basically has to be stored somewhere, this is the first line, this is the second line, this is the third line, and we can actually see that each line of code is uh, four bytes because the difference between each of them is four bytes. Um, I think, let's see, eight... Yes, yeah, C is 12, and then 1, 0, 16, 1, 4 is 20. So we can see that these are actually 4 bytes uh, instructions. And this is what's in the, this is what's in the uh, actual address. So this line actually is 8 bytes. So this line of code that I wrote is 8 bytes because when it's translated into like the exact instructions, it takes two instructions to do that. Anyhow, uh, just to go over what's the first one's doing, uh, we're doing something called load upper immediate. So we're loading upper immediate. So we're taking this number right here. So this is one zero. Uh, this is four zeros and one zero zero one, and we're putting it into dollar sign one. So dollar sign one uh, is is the number right here, and that's going to go with at. So we're going to be typing in. Uh, the names uh, S0 through S8 or S7, but the number is the same thing. So you can just see how they correspond with each other. So we're taking 1001, putting it into the upper half of this register, and then we're going to be loading um, what's at the address uh, S1, which is going to be 1001 with three zeros, or four zeros at the end, so that's actually this, because we see that we loaded the upper and that is going to go into 16 so let's see what 16 is so that's as 0 so we're putting with the value here into um, into s0 so that's what we wanted to do remember what was an F so just to kind of explain go over it a little bit uh, here's our data section right remember when we had our code we had our data right here so all of these are at, um, where are we? Uh, let me compile it one more time. So all these, so here we got zero, we got three, we got five, we got seven, and we got four, right? So we're taking the value zero and we're putting it in 16, which is S1 or S0. And then we're taking the same thing here, but, but, but if you see here, this is four. So we're, we're actually taking the offset um, for what's it, uh, dollar sign one, which is gonna be this plus four. So this is, this is this number plus zero, this is this number plus four, and the number three is there. So this is the number three. And this is sort of like an array. If you think about it, it's sort of like an array and, and going to what index you want. So this is like index zero, index one, index two. 
but instead of going 0, 1, 2, we're just going by how many bytes it is. So it's going to be 0 bytes, 4 bytes, 8 bytes, and so on. You can kind of take a look at it and you can see that it really, um, it really makes sense. So what we do through all these lines is the same thing. So I'll actually execute the code and we're going to go one step at a time so we can see what's going on. So let me just, um, we're going to go through each step. So we're running one, run one step at a time. And we see that the assembly temporary has 1001 in the top um, bits, right? Because we load it in the upper. And then we're going to see S0. We're going to put the number 0 in there. Same thing. Then we put the number 3 in S1. And we continue to go through this. OK. And we see S4 has the number 4 in it, right? So these are all the numbers that we would expect. So now it says um, we're going to go to else if these two are not equal. So we're going to run the next step. And we see that it jumps here. So let's just see what is the, let's see what this thing is actually doing. It's putting this 0, 0, 0, 0, 0002 uh, in place of the else, skipping this, skipping this, and then going there. So maybe this two means it skips two instructions. Um, so what I want to do just to really understand it is go back here, and I'm going to comment this out. So then I'm going to run assemble and then we're going to see okay so now this number is 001 so it would just skip this one instruction and go here so that seems like what the uh, what the jump would do or the branch would just would skip this one instruction and then go to the next one so let's go back and fix it so run assemble and then we'll go through the steps that we've done already okay So now we're here, so it's going to jump two steps, right? Because it sees 19 and 20 are not the same. So we're going to jump. So now we're here at the subtraction, right? So we're going to take what's in 17 and what's in, so we're take what's in 18, subtract it from what's in 17, and put it in what's in 16. So here we've got um, 3 and in, in 17, 5 and 18. So in 16, it should be 3 minus 5. So that's going to be negative 2. So that's it's going to go in um, in here, but we have to be we have to realize that this is going to be hex, so it's going to be a negative number. So we run the next step, and then we see we get FFFFFE. So if you're good with your hexadecimal numbers, you know that this is negative two. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to put our number back into um, F, right into the stack. So we see right here, or not in the stack, sorry, into the to the variable. So you see right here it's, it's all zeros and we run our next step and our next step and then that's the neg no, number negative 2 is going to be stored in F. And that's going to be it for our program. Um, programs running, finished, dropped off at the bottom. So that's it for um, static variables which are not used as much in, C in I guess basic C++ but this is um, they're used more in basic assembly if you're learning that. So uh, hopefully this video is helpful in uh, tying these different concepts together.